Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 11 of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to have a look at the pressure chamber for the sustainer. It's actually made out of two parts. There's an inner liner that provides the shape for the pressure chamber and it's also airtight and that's made out of several different components. So we'll see how those are made. Uh, and then in another part we'll see how we overwrap it with another sleeve and that provides most of the pressure containment. Uh, now we've actually made two of these. Uh, they're both identical so we're just going to show you the process for one. So anyway, let's get started. First, we're going to have a look at making the body tube. Here we're cutting up some 85 GSM cloth that we're going to need later as an overwrap. The mandrel is made from two and a half meter long PVC pipe. We wrap the mandrel in glad baked baking paper and then tape the paper down with some electrical tape. The 2 inch carbon fibre sleeve is next. We slide it on dry because it would be too difficult to put it on wet. Now we buy our sleeves from solar composites in the United States. Uh, the link is in the description below. Once it is on the mandrel, we cut it to length. Then we tape only one end of it down. This allows the rest of the sleeve to flex which makes it easier to work the epoxy into it. Now we mix up the West Systems epoxy and start pouring it on. Rollers make it much easier to work the epoxy into the sleeve. It is important to have help on long tubes like this because the pot life is only around 20 minutes. So you have someone rolling it out, someone else mixing and someone else assisting with rotating of the tube. We are always working away from the taped end to keep the sleeve stretched. When we have soaked the sleeve completely, we just use our hands to squidgy the epoxy out and also stretch the sleeve. Then we put on a single veil wrap of 85 GSM fiberglass that we cut earlier. This helps fill in the gaps in the sleeve and provides a smoother finish for the next layer. It also allows us to sand it without cutting through into the carbon fibers below. Once that's done, we put it on the rotisserie while it cures. This prevents the epoxy from pooling on one side of the tube. The next day we can remove the tape and pull it off the mandrel. Then we carefully remove the baking paper by twisting it into a rope. This tube weighs only about 360 grams. Then it's time to trim the ends of the tube. Here we've just inserted a scrap piece of PVC pipe that supports the blade as you cut it. If you look closely, you can see small pits on the inside of the sleeve. This is where the epoxy didn't fully penetrate the sleeve and could potentially cause the tube to leak. To solve this problem, we get a piece of foam and tie a couple of strings to the ends of it. We then wrap the foam with a piece of cloth and tie it down with some wire. Then we thread this whole thing through the tube. Then we pour some epoxy inside the tube and pull the foam back and forth through the tube many times. This coats the inside of the tube thoroughly, filling in all the small pits. Here you can see inside it. Now there is a few bits of lint from the cloth, but these will be white before the epoxy sets. Okay, back in. The whole tube then goes back onto the rotisserie. Because we have wet glue on the inside, we can't run the mandrel through it. So we just suspend the entire tube on a couple of rubber bands under the mandrel and rotate it that way. Now it's time to make the top end cap. 
Like we usually do, we put a party balloon over the top of the mould. The mould in this case has been 3D printed. Then we add some silicon grease. And then we add a second balloon over the top of that. The grease between the balloons lets us slide the end caps off easily. Now we tape a short piece of PVC pipe into the end of a length of carbon fibre sleeve. This is the same sleeve the body tube's made out of. Now we completely saturate the sleeve with epoxy. We're using a brush for this rather than a roller. When it's ready we slide it over the balloon. You can see how tricky it is to get the wet sleeve over the mould. We then secure the neck with a piece of wire, which will eventually be removed. Then we add more epoxy and again cover it with a number of gauze of 85 GSM fiberglass for the same reasons it was added to the body tube. Finally we wrap a single piece of fiberglass around the base. This gives us a snug fit inside the body tube. And then the whole thing goes onto the rotisserie for a couple of hours. When this is done, we end up with a cross section like this. The next day we can remove it from the mould. We pull on the balloon to loosen it up and then trim off the excess. Then it's a simple matter of pushing the mould out of the end cap. Here we're just removing the balloon from the inner surface. The hole at the top of the end cap is closed by 3D printed solid ply that is glued in with more epoxy. This is what the cross section looks like now. To fully seal the end cap against the pressure and any air leaks, we add a thin layer of 85 GSM fiberglass to the inside. We just overlap a number of the pieces. This is what the cross section looks like now. Next we make the nozzle and nozzle end cap. The nozzle is just made from some aluminium stock. This took around 20 minutes to cut off by hand. The nozzle is machined from a single piece of aluminium and is designed to be embedded in the end cap, unlike the dark shadow nozzle which was removable. Next we prepare the nozzle end cap mould. This again is 3D printed. We tap the hole at the bottom so that we can screw in a bolt that lets us easily hold the mould. Then the mould gets sanded and polished. Just like with the top end cap, we use balloons on the mould to help separate the moulds from the end cap. We tape the nozzle onto the end of the sleeve just like we did with the PVC pipe. Here we're cutting out a number of gauze that will go on the outside of the end cap. These are bias cut to make them easier to conform to the shape. Like with the top end cap, we first completely wet out the sleeve. Then we slide it onto the mould. The nozzle is press fit onto the little stub on the mould. This ensures that it's aligned with the rest of the mould. Again we add more epoxy and add the fiberglass gauze to the outside. This is finished off with a single wrap around the outside for a snug fit.
and you probably already guessed it goes onto the rotisserie. The next day it's trimmed and removed from the mold. This is the cross section of the nozzle end cap with the nozzle embedded and a sleeve on the outside. We cut out more pieces of fiberglass. We also clean the inside of the end cap with methylated spirits. The pieces are applied to the inside and partially cover the nozzle, but obviously don't cover the nozzle hole. This is what the cross section looks like now. Okay, it's time to put the pieces together. We first sand the inside of the tube as well as the end cap. We are using some super strength Araldite epoxy to glue the end caps in place. The glue is spread evenly on both surfaces to be joined. We then push the end cap slowly into the tube while making sure that there is a bead of glue all the way around the joint. This helps reduce the number of air bubbles that form in the joint. Once it's pushed all the way in, we remove all excess glue. Then we wrap the joint with electrical tape. And we place it on the rotisserie again. This makes sure that the internal joint edge has an even spread of glue. The cross section now looks like this with the end cap in the tube. Now we glue in the nozzle end cap. This is done in exactly the same way as the top end cap. This time however, we insert the alignment jig into the nozzle. This makes sure that the nozzle hole is aligned exactly with the center line of the pressure chamber body tube. The whole thing again goes on the rotisserie. The next day we can remove the alignment jig again. And now we have a couple of inner liners complete. Next we make a nozzle adapter so we can pressurize the liners. We are using this adapter during pressure tests rather than the actual release head, just in case the liner explodes and damages whatever's connected to the nozzle. Next we do a quick leak test to make sure that there aren't any obvious leaks from any of the joints. These tests were done at around 60 psi. There weren't any leaks, so we could go on to the next step. There is a small step where the end caps meet the body tube, so before we add the top sleeve, these need to be filled in. For this we are using epoxy mixed with micro balloons to create a thicker paste. After applying it to the joint, we then use a piece of plastic to smooth it out. After it dries, it gets sanded to the final shape. This is what the cross section looks like after the filler has been added. We also do that for the nozzle end cap. Because the liners are too long to fit into a bathtub, we take them to the pool to do a more thorough leak test. Here we have a weight on the side of the pressure chamber to help us hold it down underwater. Here we're testing the liners at around 200 psi. When you submerge the pressure chamber underwater, it is a lot easier to see any tiny leaks where the bubbles emerge. Thankfully both pressure chambers held up fine without any leaks.
So now we have a couple of sealed liners. Uh, those are ready to be finished. Uh, however, in the next video, we're going to take a slight detour and we're going to have a look at the deployment mechanism for these sustainers, how they work and how they were built. And then the following video, we're going to have a look at finishing off these sustainers. We're going to add fins to them and then attach the deployment mechanism as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.